Alright, welcome to a stream. My name is Matt. This is probably going to be a VOD, so I'm going to treat it a bit like that. Like I'm doing a recording a bit. Also, I will be watching chat because I'm doing this live. So what I'm doing here, for context, is I'm taking this very first game that I ever made in OpenGL. I made this for a class in college, in a, for a graphics class. It's pretty bad from a programming standpoint and game development standpoint. So it's definitely a lot of things that need or could be upgraded. But first of all, this was originally made on Linux for Linux. So all this code and all the build systems are very Linux specific. There's also a few branches. I have the original. I think this original was the one I actually submitted, but I think there's some stuff that might have copyright problems here or something like that uh, because uh, I think I used some sound effects that were stolen from the internet or whatever. I guess we'll start with original and update from there. But the main goals of this are to just make it a little more playable, make it a little better, make it look a little better. This is technically, or what it's supposed to be rather, is a haunted house game where you have to escape the haunted house and then you win. It's very simple. Uh, once you exit the house, the game just ends. There's no proper ending really. So it's just, it was kind of just something I got done enough to uh, get the grade and I had to make a lot of hacks because I, I didn't know how to do things and stuff like that. So uh, for a lot of this, I was just like, I just need to get it to work by tomorrow. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, that kind of stuff. But anyway, we're going to take it from Linux to a Windows build. And then uh, on, uh, we'll address any of the libraries we need to uh, on Windows. But yeah, the goal is basically to get building on Windows and start making improvements. Because as you'll see, once you start going through the code, there's a, I know off the top of my head, there was some hacks I did just to get it done because I was out of time. So I'm going to talk about those a little bit and why they're bad and what we can do better and stuff like that. So first we're going to look at it just with the terminal for a moment and address some main things. Oh, files, pretty straightforward files. Yeah, I was working with VS Code. I think I'm just going to use Visual Studio just because it's easier. But we're going to also take this from Makefile to CMake. And we're going to probably use a package manager to do the libraries because the other option is to like manually set them up and uh, do like get submodules or you know we could do that and i've got videos on that on my coding channel probably where you're watching this after the fact if you're curious about how to do that so yeah we got a lot of we got a lot of little basics to do let me get to the branch i want so we get checked out uh original let's just make sure we're up to date here cool and let's make a new branch get branch uh, 2023 update. I might do this like once a year or something. I don't know. Update string. Sure. I just want it to be trackable. If someone wants to like go view the changes from this video, you'll kind of see what to do in theory. All right. So from here, let's see, what do we want to do? I think I'll just go ahead and start cleaning things up a bit. I'll remove this dot VS code that shouldn't be in here to begin with. Everything else is okay for now. Yeah, I'm going to launch Visual Studio at this point. And, well, let's make... Hmm, Visual Studio is going to be a little confused by this. See, I could, like, you know, start tweaking the files here. The other thing I could do is I could just make a new directory and start copying in stuff that's needed and do it that way. And I think we'll just make a CMake list with the new item command. And then I'll just code it. This in Visual Studio Code. And just put some basics in here. A lot of people say I'm going to love Visual Studio Code, but I, I don't really use it that much. Let's see, make minimum required version. I don't know, let's just go with like 3.15. Tend to use features up to that right now and let's go project the only escape version 1.1 .1, I guess there's no other versions tagged oh, maybe we'll just do one good other doesn't really matter and there's only an executable here which is uh, I'll just name it escape okay we need all the source files so there's a couple ways of doing this it's blob I guess for now 
source, or I'll call it code in this example since it's in a code. I think I'll update it. I'll put it in, I'll end up putting it in a source directory. So it's going to be in source star.cp and we'll get the headers too. And that's what we're compiling. Okay, so something like that. And I'll just go like move code to source. That should change that file name. Yeah, okay. In our make file, we aren't going to need it anymore. All right, but that's good enough. We should at least be able to open this for now. So Visual Studio continue without code, then file, open, CMake. Find it in here. And we should be able to take it from here to just the editor. Let's see what the original make file looked like. Okay, so I was using SDL for all the sound stuff during this time. And this is just all the OpenGL stuff. And I think I was using SDL for all the windowing as well, which I guess I'm okay with, but I don't think my package manager has all that. Let's do a quick search. Search SDL to, I see that, was my head in the way. No, we can see it. Okay. So phase one of this is basically going to be to get it running on Windows with new libraries. So once we get through that phase, we're going to move on to phase two, which will be basically updating any broken code and stuff like that. Okay. We got everything. SDL is here. This should be fine. I think we'll go past C++ 11 too. We might as well. Yeah. Here's a, here's a pretty, pretty classy make file. Kind of the way I used to always do my build system, so something like this. But we're not going to need that anymore. I'm just going to need it for a reference here for these libraries, basically. The rest I don't care about too much. That's easy to figure out. So make a low note here. Uh, lives we need. need those. So we're going to have to get all those. We'll just end up doing a target link libraries private and we'll see what these are called another thing we're going to add here is a manifest for these libraries for vc pkg so we'll go new item vc pkg dot json just doing it at the root of this project show up there yep looks good and then we need to fill this out and tell it what libraries we want so we need a name and i think i'll just go with it has to be all lowercase. We'll just go with escape. I think we need a version string. We'll go with 1.0. And we need dependencies. And this is where we're going to list all the libraries that we need, basically. Let's uh, open this to the side here, like this. Isn't this exciting? I think I'll do like a little coffee break every, I don't know, hour or so or whenever I'm tired of coding and just answer any questions in the comments. But for now, I'm not really watching comments. I'll, I'll check you guys out soon. It's just going to talk like I'm talking to a video recording, basically. Okay, so we're going to need GL. I think we have all this stuff. We'll just get glue. Glue is good enough here. Uh, SDL. Now, we got to go off the names that it is. So there's SDL, SDL2. Doing this slightly wrong. I'll fix in a second if I am. We need SDL2 mixer and main. The main might just come with SDL2. I don't see a main listed here. We just need SDL2 mixer. Because that's all we need for the moment. I don't think we're going to use glut. I don't remember what all we needed it for to begin with, but we'll address it if we need to. We should just need just this stuff. This should be fine enough. Because SDL will get us the windowing stuff. The mixer will get us the sound. Glue will load all the extensions for OpenGL. I think that's all we're going to need. Okay, but this seems to be somewhat wrong, so I'm going to cross-reference one of my other projects here and see what we're doing wrong. All these need to be in quotes. And I believe we're also going to need GLM. Okay, let's see if it's happy with that. Oh, it's not going to be happy with this target link library part. Fix that shortly. 
Okay, but at this point we should get some kind of feedback here. Cool. It's going to download all the libraries. This might take a moment. I guess I can look and see if there's any chat now. Nothing. Okay. That makes it easy. I guess I should probably still make this Linux compatible. So we could do like an if Unix type setup somewhere. Maybe we'll just get that ready. That should be good. Should be fine package. I don't know if these are all going to work properly on Linux. Okay, we'll just forget about Linux for now. We'll just make sure it works on Windows. And we can mess with Linux later if we want. Maybe that'll be a, a part two if people are interested. But the way it was originally I already worked with Linux. So it's just mostly just need to adapt the CMake to consider Linux too. All right, so this canceled. Oh, it's because I edited the CMake. If you are viewing, now would be a fine time to chat or let me know what you're working on or any comments, thoughts, whatever. I have no idea how many people watch my live streams. I typically just keep the viewers hidden in general, so I prefer just not to know in general. I, I just don't want to change my mentality whether I have very few or a ton. I would rather just stay the same. Okay, so when this builds the libraries, we should get, it should tell us basically what we need in our CMake here. Yeah, so find package blue required. Then we'll do target link libraries, blue, blue. Basically just copying what's down here. I know my head might be in the way, but uh, should be able to figure it out. Actually, I'll just copy it. Copy pasta action. There's SDL2. It looks like they've got some interesting config on that. Generator expressions. Let's do each library on a new line. Oh, this is a complicated generator expression. Target name if exists, STL, STL2 main if exists. Okay. That's the code it gave me though, so it should be fine. Then we gotta add in the mixer. And we got a similar line of code for that. Need GLM here. And we'll link GLM. Okay, so that should generically be enough to get us started. Let's see. Let's see if we can just compile from here. Because in theory, we should. We got the source. We got the libraries. It should work. But it's probably going to have an error or two. So don't expect it to work. No. Okay, so it has some problems with glut. I think we can just get rid of glut. Oh, okay. I was using glut for like all the, the screen controls. Okay, so I might update this because I think glut is pretty out of date. I might update this to GLFW. Let's let's just see if glut is still available. Search glut. It is. We got free glut. So we can we can do glut. That's fine. We'll just uh, change as little as possible in this port. So free glut. Add that to the library manifest. Uh, uncommon it where we, there we go, come with that. And we need to add it to our CMake as well. But first we can just regenerate our CMake cache so that it downloads the library and installs it. And it should tell us basically what we need to put in our CMake. I think these GL links are implied, or maybe they're applied through the glue or glut, so I don't think we need to address these first two. We'll see. If we do, we, we'll do it. Okay, there's glut. Find package. Uh, we need several packages for this. I guess I'll just do what it says. Find package. Free glut config required. But it also has this one here. It has them both. So we'll just put those in there, link those. And just see what happens. Okay, CMake was successful. Let's build. This runs first try. I'm going to be, it runs. Okay, but well we get a blank blue screen. I probably failed to load the resources. Yeah, it, 
didn't find our shaders and that sort of stuff. So we got a little file directory problems, but it actually builds. So that's interesting. I did not expect it to build without changing any of the code, actually. Oh, um, that's cool though. Okay, so we're good on the libraries. We're not gonna mess with the code yet. Code is definitely gonna require some overhaul. Now uh, we just need to straighten out the shaders. It doesn't know where the shaders are. We have a fragment of vertex shader. And let's see where we load these. Shader.h probably. Okay, now this is just some boilerplate to do the main stuff. We need to find where we're specifying our paths to these shaders, because that is, it's in our source. And this is building somewhere else. So I guess what we need to do, we have a couple different options here. We could take these shaders and we could hard code them in somewhere into the C++, or we could copy these to the build directory. That way it could find them easier, because that'll be an out build. Let's go ahead and open this up. The executable's right here. We could copy the shaders here too. So maybe we'll just do that, because that's kind of easy to do. That's a quick and easy solution. So we can just go file, copy, directory. I need to look this up, I forget. You may copy a folder to build. Yeah, I was on the right track. File, copy. And then we want to go you make current source there. I always forget how to do this exactly. Yeah. I forget if it allows us to specify a folder. Let's just try it and see if it does. And destination, it'll be we'll just macro this in, key C make. I think it's binary dirt. Okay, let's see what this does. We'll have to observe this out directory and see what happens. Okay, it puts the shaders in here, but it doesn't put them in a folder. We'd prefer to have them in a folder. So I think we gotta do this. Let's try it. So delete that, delete that. What? Oh, I didn't reset. Okay, I need to uh, regenerate this. Yeah, we get a shaders folder this way. Okay, so that will copy our shaders folder to this other one. And hey, hey, it works. Imagine that. I think it did not load all the audio. So we need to do a file, copy the resources. But hey, we can move around. It's a first person game. We're almost done with step one. Oh, it has a problem. My mouse goes off the screen if I move it fast enough. My mouse is not locking the screen. Okay. That's an issue we'll definitely have to fix. I think when I built this, I built this on a laptop that only had one screen, so I didn't know that it would go off your screen to your other screens. But yeah, we'll just copy these resources the same way we did the shaders, which isn't exactly my favorite way of doing this, actually, because, well, I don't want to be copying a bunch of binaries every build, but, no, oh, well. We just want to get it done. Can worry about optimizing and efficiency later. Pro tip, don't optimize too soon. Just get it working, especially when you're on a deadline. I must escape. Yeah, this is the game. <laughs> There's the footsteps. Did I play through the game? I might as well play through. I'm going to turn this volume down, though. I don't know if this is going to affect it on the stream. So warning, loud sound warning. I'm pretty sure there are really loud sounds in this. So basically you're in this house, yeah, it's really generic looking. I think I only used one square and a bunch of transforms to do this whole thing. So there's only like one box in memory, if you will. So it doesn't really tell you in this game, but basically you have to get out this front door. And it just knocks if you click it to start. So you gotta figure out what to do. Black triangle. Here. Nothing in here. I know what to do, but I'm just goofing around for the sake of you guys knowing, I guess. So it's not exactly a challenge. You basically just 
explore a little, find this triangle. This is supposed to be, I ran out of time and didn't know how to do it at the time. What's supposed, what it's supposed to be is this here is supposed to be like a wall that looks half broken and could be broken through with a tool or something. Supposed to, that's what it's supposed to be. And this is supposed to be a tool or a bomb or something to break the wall. Pick it up, you get a little sound, but that's what it's supposed to be. And then this turns white after you pick it up. Just to give you a hint, because I couldn't think of a better way to do it on my deadline. Though, so, why do you want to blow it up? Where do you go? Okay, so you blow it up. The ceiling starts falling in. You gotta pull this lever. And uh, figure out what it did. What it does is it moves this wall. How would you know that? I don't know. You gotta get this little hatchet. Then once you get the little hatchet, you gotta go break down the front door, and then you escape. You gotta do this before the ceiling squishes you. You are dead! Or you die. That's that's all the game is. Okay, I'll win the game this time. I must escape. Oh god. Mouse control issues. Okay, mouse control issues are real bad. I was definitely the only person in my class who got first-person stuff working. No one else had anything first-person working. Everyone just had like a little 2D thing. That's the game. Oh yeah, there's also a jump for some reason. I must escape. There was gonna be like jump stuff in the game, but I didn't have time to actually add any of that. Okay, well it works on Windows, so phase one is done. We have the build working on Windows. Um, I think we can commit this. Okay, well we don't have a proper git ignore, so we need to fix that. You know, we can delete our old make file now, we don't need that. Okay, so let's fix up our git ignore. Um, I'm just gonna use one from my other project, copy it over. So otherwise I'll be here figuring out little things to type for ages. There we go. All this stuff. That should cover everything. Okay, now when we go to our git changes, it should cut out a lot of the stuff. Okay, but it doesn't have VS Code in it. We'll just add that somewhere. Or maybe it does. Okay, it's saying it's deleting it. Alright, no, that's fine. No, this is fine. I don't think we actually need that line. Yeah, VS Code's already in here. Alright, okay. Build on Windows with TKG. Wait, I'm on the original branch? I don't want to be on the original branch. Uh, crap. I thought I'd switch to this branch. How do I switch this thing I just committed or undo this commit without losing all my changes? Ah, uh, that's too much. That's too much brain power required. I'm not gonna worry about it. We're just, we're just gonna push it. Done and done. But yeah, I was not supposed to be on this branch. I was supposed to be on this one I made earlier. But whatever, it's fine. It's still in its original state. It's just it builds on Windows now. And to get it to build on Linux, still I'd have to go try it on Linux and test some stuff. But it it shouldn't require too many changes to do that. Basically, we'd have to do the same thing. Except make sure they have it on Linux. Might actually be like exactly the same, actually. But yeah, that's good enough. So let's do another thing here. Let's say I want to give an example in this video of how to uh, like ship this to your friends and let them play it. Because yeah, you could tell them to like compile it and you know go to GitHub, learn how to compile, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but your friends aren't going to do that. So what you can do. Is you can ship it to them like they're used to seeing games by just putting install here. Um, install this thing. What else do we need? Let me double check. Check my references here. Install targets. And then we also want to make sure they get these shaders and sound. 
stuff because they're going to need that. So we'll go install files. Oh, we also need to make sure they get the DLLs required for these libraries. So we need to do that as well. So the way we're going to do that is through another file. Blob all the variables we call runtime DLL. That's from the current binary der, der DLLs. So get all those. Just make sure they get all these too. I think that's all we need. Oh, we need these files too. Okay. And I think in this case we go, let's do some more globs. I guess we could do this earlier and then do the file copy. I might be doing a little redundant work here where I could combine some of these commands using this shader variable I'm about to make, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to continue on. But if you want to do that as an experiment or test or whatever, go for it. GLS. Okay. Just do an install on that. I guess I'll call it runtime shaders. And rather than bin, I think we're going to go shaders. Well, bin shaders. Yeah, that's all we need to do. That should be fine. And we'll do a similar thing for the sound stuff. Let's so work resources sound. I think they're all dot wave files. So I need to check. Yeah, they're all dot wave files. And we'll put those in bin, resources, sound. That should be good. Make sure we update this to runtime sounds. Sorry if my head's in the way of this code. I'll bring it up here at least once. So yeah, this is kind of ugly. I definitely refactor this later to put these files earlier and just make it a little cleaner, but this is fine enough. I'll walk through this real quick. We're gonna install the target. That's the executable. Uh, we're gonna find all the DLLs we need, put them in the bin which is where the executable goes. We're gonna find all the runtime shaders, also put them in there, so it knows where to find them at runtime, all for the install. And I believe you can use the CPAC extension here too to make a like make an actual installer, which we might try to do next if we want, but I have to dig in to remember how to do that a little more. All right, let's go ahead and uh, update this CMake. Now we should get an install option. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, let's also add another config or just like min size release here. I'm going to name this release min, change this to min size release. And that should build without debug symbols for the one we want to ship in theory. Holy crap, comments. Okay, I'll take a moment to read through these. Hey, hey. Thanks, NyQuil God. I don't know what your name is. I'm just going to call you NyQuil God. I guess it's N-Y-Q-B-G-C-D, which looks like NyQuil God. All right. Cool. I'm glad you're learning from this. That's awesome. John says my sleep schedule is an abomination. On the contrary, I just got up at 6 a.m. and started doing work. I think my sleep schedule's on point. Well, today, at least. <laughs> Quill God. <laughs> Okay, I'll read another question here at the end. Uh, maybe this question has been irrelevant, but I always wonder why we type each source into file instead of just saying include all CP files. Oh, like this glob thing? Well, it's because of how CMake works, actually. Um, it, it actually handles it better than it used to, but they used to say never ever do this because if you add or remove source files over here, then by this definition, it won't know that. But that's not entirely true. You just have to make sure you go over to your CMake and hit save to put a new timestamp on it and regenerate and it'll update. But if you manually list out every file, it will. You also, if you add a new file, you have to go edit this. So you by nature have to update the timestamp. So that's the only reason that I know of that uh, they say don't use glob, but I don't care. Like I, I'm aware of this fact, so it's not an issue for me. Okay, let's get this install going and make sure it works. Uh, switch to release. So you guys like my first game ever? I built this so long ago. It's, it's very nostalgic for me. And I haven't touched it for years because of this nostalgia factor of I didn't want to change it. But here we are, finally making a change. Okay, let's make sure it builds and release. I must escape. Beat the game real quick. This game is so janky. Oh. 
lost my mouse again. Okay, there we go. Break down this thing. Door, go behind the secret wall, get the axe. Go over here and try to break out before I die. Oh, there's plenty of time. I got time. This is fine. There's the wall, it slides outside the house. It's janky. All right, um, so it runs in the release. Let's install it now. So we go to install, hit this install button, and it says there's an issue with the FreeGlot DLL, doesn't find it. Okay, let's fix that. So we need to go to that out folder and see what's going on here. There we go. Out, install, release, bin. It's got that, it's got, oh, it didn't copy the DLLs. There are no DLLs here, so what's the problem there? Current binary dir. Okay, so it should be copying them from the build, this folder, and it's not. Why not? I don't know. That's weird. All right. Thanks for the compliments, Nike. Well, God, appreciate that on on the first game. <laughs> It's took a surprisingly lot, a lot of time. It's very janky, as as you'll see once we get to the code here. So as soon as this install works, I will jump to that. And we'll we'll look at the code. We got a lot of a lot of fixes. Mainly, like I only had one square for the whole thing and one triangle, so that's all it's built on. But it would, and the mouse goes off the screen, so that's an issue. All right, install. I must escape. Okay, it's fine. It just didn't copy the DLs the first time. This time it did. Yeah, they're there. All right, so like this bin file right here, we can you could send this to your friends and tell them to run the executable, and it would run. It would work. The only escape is escape, so I can just double click this. I must escape. And yes, if you press the escape key, it closes the game. That's that was the joke. It's terrible. It's a terrible joke. I know. Uh, but yeah, usually from this point I just like zip it up or something and send it to people if I want to do that or have them test it. Which I guess I could put in my Discord somewhere if you guys want it. I don't know if it's worth distributing because it's, it's very terrible. But that's a way you could do it, for example. I wanted to at least get that in the video. Uh, the main thing is while they need to be using the same OS, like Windows here for example, uh, these DLLs, just all the runtime files, which for in my case, the DLLs for the library, the shaders and the resources, and whatever, however your executable runs needs to path to all this stuff correctly, which for the DLLs, same directory. For other stuff, it's just however it was in your code. Like when we go look in our code, you're going to see it's going to look in a shaders folder and a resource sounds folder. So those are the, the core things. But if you want to just give them a uh, installer that does all this and then lets, lets them put it in their directory and stuff, use CPAC. And it goes off of however you have your install set up. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. That's something you can research later if you want. I just, uh, I'd have to do research to remember how to do that exactly. But it's pretty easy, actually. Paddle with Windows 10 and 11 should be. I haven't tested 11, but I don't see why not. But yeah, they won't have to build it or anything. They just need to run the executable. And as long as they have like a graphics card that runs OpenGL, it'll be fine. But everybody does because that's legacy stuff. All right, now part two, the code. Um, let's install. But this in theory should also build and install on Linux currently too, as long as they have the libraries. All right, let's let's optimize some code. This code is garbage right now. All right, as you'll find out very shortly here. Let's see, how did I even do this? I have a main. Let's start with the main. Ooh, okay. This code is already so ugly right off the bat. I have a window width, window height, 
set, last X, last Y. Oh, this is for like mouse centering stuff. A full screen, screen commented out. Okay, a glut init with the args, init display. I don't even know what this does anymore, actually. A bunch of C out stuff. Include game. Let's see what this game has. X turns from the main. Okay, yeah, don't do this. Never do this. <laughs> Apparently it works, but you're not supposed to do that. So I guess this looks like I set up the square and triangle here and the camera and the shader. Do some delta time stuff for between frames. These are probably all the callback stuff for all my pressing keys. Mouse click, mouse click hold. Wait, there's a click hold? Oh, I have drag motion set up apparently. I didn't know that. I don't think we even use that. But I have all these like debug C outs in here, which I uh, really don't want either. There's no way I'm going to get this properly refactored in about the hour I have left, but I'll get as far as I can. Okay, state, main menu or play. There is no main menu in this game, so I think I just skipped over that. It's just always in play. Knit all callbacks. Okay, so this just sets up all these probably. Take a look. Yeah, so when you hit Play, it emits all callbacks. I should be in some kind of initialization because this is some, some really ugly code. Okay, so here's where it creates the shader, and this is where that folder directory is specified. That's why it looks for shaders in a shader folder from where the executable is. It's, it's literally this hard coded in right here, and it's going to be the same for wherever I load the sounds and resources. Okay, this is all the callbacks using glut. So I think glut was overall replaced with glfw. I have play sounds, game callbacks. Oh no. Close your eyes, kids. You, you can't see this. Don't, don't look. Okay, this is adults only. All right, don't look. Uh, don't judge me. Don't judge old coder me. This is the ugliest code ever. Okay, I'll explain why this is so bad. Okay, so I have a function called update display that I probably call every frame, right? And I remember at the time I was doing this the night before it was due and I couldn't figure out a better way. So I'm like, I'm just gonna, just gonna put everything in here and just get it to work. And that's literally what I did. So <laughs> I tried to have it so that it had a night and day cycle. So I literally just hard coded based on Delta time, different colors of the uh the background of the clear screen to like emulate a skybox that just changed colors but it just like suddenly shifts to hard different colors so you don't really notice that in the game because you're in a house the whole time so but it's really bad it's pretty ugly and there's a time of day thing in the shader that updates it i think i honestly don't know what i was doing there all right but something like that this clear color doesn't need to change anything on the shader though, so I don't know why I was setting the time of day on the shader too. Not really sure. I think I might have been mixing it with like the walls and everything to try to emulate a change of color. All right, and then we have a GL clear color. I guess that's okay. Then we update our projection in case we moved. This should, in theory, only update when you actually move, because if this just updates when it doesn't need to, it's going to be inefficient, but it's not that bad. Uh, same with the view. should only update when we actually move. So there, I should have some kind of like moved flag rather than just setting this every time. All right, and now here's where it gets really janky. I have a render box. I call this a render box. It's just a model matrix. And literally for every square that I draw, I update this model matrix and set a color and then push it to the shader and then do a draw. And this one is the red wall, I guess. So like for every single square in that game, I have something like this. And there's always some Boolean around it, depending on the game state for like some of the things that change during the game. So there's this one and it draws at the end once it gets everything set up. So it's like, this is some sort of game state for the red wall, apparently, and the orange room item. Then it goes on to the next thing. Okay, apparently, okay, this is the outside ground. Do the same thing. Update this model matrix. Draw it. And then have an area for the collapsing roof ceiling. Some 
if the main door HP is greater than zero and the orange room item was collected and the red wall is destroyed, time till dead updates <laughs> the delta time collapsing roof goes down 0.3 of a float. I should have this delta time probably. Oh, if it's greater than 0.03, I don't know why it's doing that. Then the collapsing roof goes down this number times the delta time. Then if dead sound played and time till dead is greater than that, play dead sound, dead sound played equals to, oh my god, this is so great. I think the first time I put this in here, it was just looping, you are dead, you are dead, you are dead, like every time. So I had to put this bully in to make it stop. Then if the time till dead is over this time, it just, it just exits, it just closes. <laughs> oh my goodness can't believe how funny this is to me. <laughs> and I think I had to tweak this so that it was just enough time to play the sound and then close. Because if I didn't do this, it would just like start playing the sound and then close immediately or something. All right. And this is only what, like an eighth of the way through the file. This just goes on. This is just like messy logic in a giant file of just every little thing in the game that happens. So I guess this is the majority of the game loop. But the fact that I was manually doing okay every for every single square reset the model back to the model matrix back to default do a translate scale set it on the shader draw that one reset it translate it scale it set it on the shader draw it like every frame just doing this or not a frame like a bunch of times per frame this is very inefficient but it doesn't matter because the game's so small anyway that it's not really gonna hurt anything but like I remember tweaking all these numbers to try to get all these squares in the right place to make it look like a, a proper box. This must be the collapsing roof because I think, wait, I don't know what this is. Collapsing roof. Collapsing roof. Why don't I have that in here a bunch of times? I don't remember. This is more acceptable in 2D for sure. But in 3D, you should probably have a system that isn't a giant cascade of logic because can you imagine trying to update this <laughs> or change your level to change my level i literally have to like manually tweak these hit run tweak run and just like it's really slow process oh my goodness i don't know if i can manage to really update this right now after all this is this is very painful at least i have comments i'll say that says like what this stuff was supposed to do i think i had to because i literally couldn't find it in the code if i didn't above front door oh and also uh i guess you can see this if i run it i must escape like this orange wall this isn't one square this is like a, there's like a square for this section and then a square for i don't know if it's hard to point correctly and then a square above the door and then a square over here so i had to draw like three different squares for these a lot of these walls and same with this one one big square one up here and one over there and as you can see like that one's a little off i don't know if you can see it but there's my camera's reversed so this is awkward but there's a little jaggy there i just didn't get it perfect because i probably gave up and was like it's close enough right side wall of the door left side wall the door so there's like big vertical walls it's it's just it's very jank but it's done and i think i got a good grade on it <laughs> better than the latest call of duty thanks for hanging hanging out nyquil nyquil god enjoy your day all right well this just kind of goes on so game idol what the heck is this Grocery. Game idol. This is, uh, I think this is just the standard. Oh, this is the jump, a rise and fall. This is just the movement. Okay, so this is the movement. It's not idle. I don't know why it's called idle. Here's the click stuff. Oh, the click. Trigger interact area. Do you want to see jank? Okay, so the interaction areas, I like manually programmed positions in the world. And if you click when you're in them, stuff happens. So that's how the doors open. There's like an area in the world that if you press click while you're in that position, then it interacts with the door. There's no ray casting or anything like that. You just got to be in a certain spot and then click. That's, that's literally how the clicks work in this game. Oh my goodness. This is gonna, this is too much. I've decided at this point that this is too much work to refactor. This would take me like days and it would not be worth my time because it's, it's terrible.
But we'll make a few edits, like I'll initialize this front vector. There. Look at me. Optimizing. Fixing code. Oh my goodness. What is this? Time since last step. Time between footsteps. Max look angle. Wait, is that really a thing? I gotta check this out. I must escape. Oh, I can only look up 35 degrees. Interesting. Uh, program that in there. It's as high as I can look up. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I'll look down. Oh, there's another wall jank problem right there. And you can only look down 30. So I locked it to only be able to 35 degree angle look. Okay. So I guess that's fine. Zoom. I think this is like a field of view. Let's just up this to 90. Let's see what this looks like with 90 FOB. I must oh, look at that. Heck yeah. Ready to do some first person shooting. It actually looks better, but it looks almost too big. I guess that might be a change worth doing, but let's see what 60 looks like. I must escape. That's probably better. Okay, I can at least say I've updated some code at this point. There's the movement, which is a static struct. It's just hard coded in a header as a static. Oh no, don't do this either. This is painful. What else do I have in here? Primitive objects. Oh, I have hard coded in the positions of the triangle and cube. That's not too bad. And apparently I had a circle ready, but I never used it. So I don't even think this is used. Let's see if it compiles without it. I must escape. Yeah, there's no circles in this game, so we don't need that. I think I was planning on drawing circles with the shader. Just based on a radius or something? I don't know. I really don't remember. But didn't end up using that. Solid zone. Oh, this is this is why in the game you can't walk through walls. It's literally this stuff. There's certain positions where if you run into them, you don't move. This is all just manually programmed in. There's no physics in this game. It's just solid zones, as I called them. Where it just wouldn't let you move. God. Alright, the sounds. How did I do the sounds? Um, I think I just loaded up some footstep files and some grunt files. I think I found most of these on the internet. <laughs> Those are the jumps. These are the one, two, three, four, five, six different footsteps that it randomizes between, I think. So you get like a variety. Door closed, door open, yeah. Just all this little stuff. Hiccup sound. I think I had some sounds that I never used. There's the guile theme, the win. That's definitely copyrighted. There's the chop sound. I don't know what music box is. I don't know what runaway is. I don't know what demo is. I don't think I even use these. Oh, that's demolition. Let's explode then. Oh, it's when you blow up the door. Okay. Music box. Oh, this is supposed to be playing while you're playing the game. I don't think it is for some reason. Play default music. I don't know. There's definitely supposed to be some little background music playing. That's like creepy, but all right. So there's also no lighting in this game. All right. There's, there's more terrible code. Don't worry. I'm just not showing all of it, but this, you can go look at it if you want to get up. Let's look at how bad the shaders are. Frag shader just outputs a color, no textures, no lighting, just solid colors. The vertex shader. The heck is this? Oh, time of day and color in so I set these for different walls <laughs> oh, it's, and it's just a bunch of if color color equals ambient time of daylighting oh this is commented out I didn't even use this so there's code that sets this and I don't even use it I think I didn't like the way it looked but I never took it out of the code I guess uh, I can do you know I can do that that's one thing I can do to fix it say I did something Let's just find out where it did this Game callbacks? Yeah. Okay. Some of the callbacks. So the callbacks are like what run. Yeah, this whole time of day thing, it doesn't even use this. So there's like literally no point in this like code because switch to represent representation of sky. Doesn't use this. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't use any of this. So the better way to do this would just be to have an actual light and have it change and move. 
rather than like manually hard coding and all this stuff. So yeah, it should still work the same without that. I must escape. Yeah, that literally did nothing. All right, we fixed it. I think that's all I can bear of uh, working on this. This was actually worse than I thought it was going to be, <laughs> but we did we did some good work. I I think showing the the switching it to Windows and showing the install, kind of showing how you can go over the code and update shaders is probably enough for this video. And yeah, that's all. That's all I'm going to do on this. Hope you enjoyed.